you doing, everyone? Welcome to this episode of the Cajun Conservative Show, where I talk about life, I talk about liberty, I talk about the pursuit of happiness, and I show you, the audience, the world, that Cajuns do have intelligence. No, we are not all like Bobby Boucher. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Ladies and gentlemen, hope you had a good weekend. I know I did. As always, attended church, had a great service. Uh, saw somebody give their life to the Lord, ladies and gentlemen. And that makes, as a believer, that makes my day. You know, um, a lot of people would think, well, Isaac, you talk about politics. You must be excited to go into the podcast studio and record your show. I, I have fun. I do. I um uh, I love doing this. I love, I love talking, but it's nothing like being in church and seeing someone give their life to the Lord. Better yet, it's nothing like just seeing somebody give their life to the Lord altogether. Now, I, I have some, I guess you could say, air quote, friends that um, that, won't, that 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 would tell me how oh, I get brainwashing people. You know, if this is brainwashing, hey, I'm glad to be brainwashed. At least I got hope. You know, uh, you know, you hear people when you act on the, the, the subject of evolution, you are, you know, either either some occult like Jehovah's Witness and they will say, uh, Isaac, you know, uh, what is your hope? And I tell them, look, I have faith in Jesus Christ. I'm going to heaven. And when I ask them, well, what you got to look for? I just die. So you're trying to say we have no purpose on this earth. No purpose whatsoever. I'm just, it bothers me. You know, it bothers me that that that, that we have people on this planet. I believe there's no there's no purpose. You just you eat, you live, you die, and that's it. You cease to exist. I I rather I rather believe. And and you know some atheists might ask me, and some people with other variety of cults that don't believe in heaven or hell, they'll say, "Well, Isaac, but what what if it ain't true? What what if there is no heaven? Well, I didn't really lose much, but if there is a heaven and a hell, I have a lot to gain and I got a lot to lose." So I'd rather be on the right side of the uh, of this this argument. And I'm no pun intended to Republicans or anything, but I like being on the right side of things. So, but uh, anyway, let's get into our topics today, ladies and gentlemen. And I know that there there was a shooting in Maine this week, um, and I, I'm going to touch on that on the second segment. And I'm praying for the families, as I always say. You know, um, politics should be put aside. Unfortunately, the Democrats don't do that. We're going to talk about that in the second segment. But uh, but I have something else I want to cover. And uh, but I'm, I am saying this. I, I am. My heart goes out to the families in Maine that lost their their loved ones. So if you can keep keep them in your prayers and, and, and ask the Lord to help these people. This is a tragedy. And we're going to dive more into that later on. Uh, but I want to go ahead and focus. And I haven't talked about them in a good while. But uh, The View has come up with some stupidity at its finest. And look, ladies and gentlemen, I- I'm going to I'm gonna address something here because I, I-, I shared a, uh, I-, I put out a tweet, well, an ex post. Uh, I-, I shared it on Facebook. I-, I-, I didn't put it on Truth Social. I just, things came up and I didn't get a chance to do it. And I shared the arg- uh, the article that I'm going to be bringing out here. And some of the, some people that listen to this are asking me, Isaac, why why do you go ahead and bring out the view? Why do you give them airtime? Well, first off, they got enough airtime as it is. They're on ABC, and you know they they they're seen all over the world. A lot of people think, well, if you just stop talking about, it, people are not going to pay attention to them. No, that's not true. It's the same thing with liberals. Liberals tell. People on their side, just stop listening to conservatives. It was the same thing with Rush Limbaugh. Rush Limbaugh had tons of liberals listen to him, and everybody would tell them, stop listening to Rush Limbaugh. Rush Limbaugh was so big, you couldn't get rid of him. And this is how the view is. But silence is deadly if you if you don't say something. Because, you know, like a lot of people, why you talk about the view? Because I'm trying to tell you the audience, or trying to show you the audience what they doing and how do how do we combat them how do we how do we go ahead and 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 and, and spew out or expose their lies and this is why i come behind this microphone and i talk about the view it's not because i like talking about the view i don't watch the view when i see articles and i read it and i, I say that's a good story I want to expose the views lies. That's why I go ahead and talk about the view. That's why I go ahead and bring out the view. A lot of people, well, if you give them publicity, you, you, you're promoting them. No, I'm trying to expose their lies. 
And ladies and gentlemen, this is that's all the view does. I'm sorry. Uh, goofy Whoopi. Uh, and that's who I call Whoopi Goldberg. If she ever gets wind of it, hey, be offended. Um, Joy Behart. I call her jo uh, Joe. I don't know why I do that, but Joy Behart. Um, it, it, a box of rocks is smarter than her. And, and ladies and gentlemen, I just, I look, I don't mean, I don't, I'm not trying to criticize these women, these women, but ladies and gentlemen, th what they're saying is false. What they're saying is false. And I, I, I feel it's my obligation to come and, and show you the audience their lies. And you can tell other people, there might be some people that, that watch the view that are not aware of what they teach or what they say. And yes, they are teaching, they're spreading propaganda. And this is what happened this week and I bluntly joy Behart called conservatives evil and stupid well some are the other view and and this article was talking about joy Behart's comments to the newly elected speaker of the house mike johnson now we talked a little bit about this last time that mike johnson got elected and the left-wing media just went full-blown attack i have an article that uh I, I think i had it let me see no i did not put it in yeah, I did have it in the uh, for the third segment, but it's in here. KGP or Kareem Jean Pierre says new speaker Mike Johnson has defined himself as a MAGA extremist. The left ha the left has been been saying this. Mike Johnson is a MAGA extremist. Um, on this one segment, I have an article that I think is the same uh, show. Whoopi Goldberg compared uh, Mike Johnson. Oh, uh, he, she said that Mike Johnson did not believe in the election being fairly in 2020. Um, he, he believes that he, he has a fan, he has a notion that, that some people want to abort the baby right when it's coming out of the, the mother's womb. And I hate to tell Whoopi, what let's call her goofy because that's who she is. Goofy whoop, uh, uh, Goldberg, goofy Goldberg. Um, there is people that believe in California. It, I think it was Gavin Newsom that signed a bill that you can have an abortion up to the ninth month up to the time of birth. There is people that believe that, but Mike Johnson is bad because he believes that. And we're going to dive more into that little on. And let me read uh, Goofy uh, Goldberg's um, statement. She said, this guy doesn't believe that the election was fair. He thinks that you can't have a abortion in the... You can, you, he thinks you can have an abortion in the middle of having a baby because clearly he doesn't know how women bodies work. Uh, I'm going to stop on the comment right there. I just said that there's the state of California and other states in, in this country have allowed abortion up to the time of birth. Also, if you remember Virginia, Virginia, Mr. Ralph Northam from Virginia, I'm not trying to pick on my, my fellow Americans from Virginia. I'm just, you know, but, but, but Ralph Northam, from the state of Virginia, even made a proposal that, hey, if the baby, if you had a fell abortion, you had 30 days, you made the baby comfortable, and you had 30 days, and you could make a decision if you wanted to keep it or not. That was a Democrat. So whoopee saying, oh, this guy th he thinks you can have an abortion in the middle of having a baby. Uh, there are some people that believe that. And also, let, let, you know, uh, full, I think it's full-term abortion. It's a, it's a, it's a practice where they put the needle behind the baby. They, they, they make sure the baby comes out feet first, and they put a needle in the back and they suck the brains out. That, that is, I, and I can't remember the abortion's name, but Whoopi is uneducated on this. Whoopi, well, let me say it like this. She might not be uneducated. She might just be willingly ignorant. She don't want to know about this. But Whoopi made these statements, and... Um, Says she don't he don't know how clear how women body work and she asked the question is this guy what we really want sitting up there, kind of like kind of like saying well this dude don't know what he's talking about he's just stupid and and the whole clip is nine minutes long I'm not gonna play a whole nine minute segment of the view on here to talk about what they did, but ladies and gentlemen the the, the view if you listen to these women think that Mike Johnson is a dummy. Now, Mike Johnson's an attorney, and he's a very smart individual. I have heard Mike Johnson talk a number of times on the radio and television because I live in the state of Louisiana. I probably know more about Mike Johnson than a lot of senators. And he did come out of the blue and become the Speaker of the House. But ladies and gentlemen, these women honestly think that us Republicans are stupid. Now, I'm not the greatest... I don't have the greatest education. I'm not the, the sharpest knife in the drawer. But ladies and gentlemen, I know enough. And I'm not stupid. 
Look, I have a license that a lot of Americans can't get. They can get it. They study for it. But you have to go through special classes to get a license to drive a dump truck or an 18-wheeler. And, and ladies and gentlemen, majority of people that do, not all, but majority of people that do that are more conservative and Republicans. Now we have some exe uh, uh, exemptions like the liberal trucker that my friend, that, that's a, he is a, he is a truck driver and he's a liberal. So, but you know, it's, it, you know, it's, you, these women are basically saying that Mike Johnson's is a clocks. And if you start listening to them and they're having their whole conversation, I'm not even getting the joy yet, but if you listen to the conversation they were having, they were basically saying that Republicans are stupid. And ladies and gentlemen, look, they can call us stupid. Don't dare call a Democrat or somebody on the left stupid. You offended me. Y'all was taking me out of content. And they get all offended. But they can go ahead and throw jabs at us as Republicans. By, by trying to make us look stupid. And look, that you know, and I've debated a lot of people. And like one, one thing comes in, one thing comes to mind is when I was on a podcast and I I showed up two liberal people on the on the argument of abortion. And I, I knew what I was talking about. But ladies and gentlemen, they try to make me sound dumb the next episode because they they were and look, I, I heard that they were thinking about not releasing the episode. But people on the left do this. They go ahead and they debate you. You win the argument. You make them look like they don't know what they're talking about. They come back and they say, well, you know what? This dude's dumb because he said this, this, and this. And they're trying to make themselves look good by criticizing and making the Republican or the, the right-leaning person, the, the conservative, whoever it is, they're trying to make them look stupid because they lost the argument. And this is what, this is what I think they're doing here on The View. Now, she added, uh, well, hold on one second. Yeah, yeah, let me go down right here. Uh, Goldberg asks, um, yeah, Goldberg asks, do we want sitting there? And uh, Joe Behart said he looks mal-mannered. And, wo and Goofy, we're going to call her who she is, a Goofy Goldberg. Um, does he? Like, oh, he looks mal-mannered? Oh, he looks calm? He looks like he knows what he's doing, uh, does he? It goes back to my point of trying to make Mike Johnson look stupid in front of the American people. And look, ladies and gentlemen, on a side note right here, there's not a lot of people watching The View. I probably got more views than The View right now. And ladies and gentlemen, they, they, they call themselves The View. They're not, they're not a show that represents all views. Oh, yes, we are. We got a Republican that sits way, or if you're looking at the screen, way on the right-hand corner while Goofy Goldberg is sitting on the left. Ladies and gentlemen, that I'm sorry, that woman, I can't remember her name at the moment. That woman is not a conservative and she's not a Republican. She might have a Republican uh, title. She might have put herself Republican, but she's not a Republican. She's a Democrat. She's a rhino. She's a Republican in name only because she, she sides more with the left than she does them with the Republican Party. And look, this is why, and look, I'm not uh 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 McCain uh John McCain's daughter was on the and look John McCain was not a a a was not a um was not a uh a real conservative and look, look props to this man he served that country he 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 suffered for this country and he's a he he's a great American hero but John McCain's daughter it, it, it's kind of like her daddy, and she couldn't stand on the panel because she was more conservative than the woman that they have on there now. Ladies and gentlemen, this, that woman is not a conservative. She's not, she does not, oh, we got all views on this view, on the view. No, y'all don't. Y'all have a Republican. That's a yes person to y'all. A yes woman. That will agree with Whoopi and Joe Behar. But now going back to what, uh, Whoopi making a statement, does he? Like, oh, he's stupid. And listen to Behar's, uh, quote, and this is what really got me angry. This is why I posted on Truth uh, on uh, on X and posted on Facebook. Um, Behar continued, "Well, he has glasses. Like, oh, he's trying to look smart, but at least Matt Gates and Jim Jordan have the decency to look evil." Point. My second point of this segment: they they try to make Republicans look stupid and evil. Listen, listen to how she's saying this. L and this is her quote. This is from the View a few days ago. Well, he has glasses, like he's trying to make him look, look himself look smart, but he's trying to make himself not look evil. But at least Matt Gates and Jim Jordan have the decency to look evil. See, ladies and gentlemen, this is the problem with the Democrat Party and the left.
They believe we are bad people with bad ideas. We believe as Republicans, and look, I disagree with the, the Democrat Party, and there is some people I call evil, all right? I believe they have some people that have evil intentions in their heart. But majority of the people on the left are good people with bad ideas. The Democrat Party, and I hear Dan Bajino say this all the time, there is Republicans, but the left looks at Republicans as bad people with bad ideas. They believe we're bad people with bad ideas, and we, they need to get rid of us. And look, and look, the view clearly has this view because Goofy Goldberg and all the other fascist women that are up there, including the Republican, did not stop Joe Behar. If I was a guest on that show and she made that comment, I would say, hold on, stop. Are you telling me that you believe all Republicans are evil? Because look, because because he looks mal he looks mal mannered, and he has glasses. So he don't really look evil, but he is evil because he has a Republican. He has an R behind his name. Um, she continues. This guy is like a wolf in sheep clothing. How? He's a Republican with Republican views. He's against abortion. He's against uh, gun. He's against uh, gun control. He, he, he's a Republican. He's not. A, he's not a wolf in sheep's clothing. Uh, oh, he, he looks he looks like that because he looks like he's not evil and he looks like he's he's mild mannered and he looks like he can he work with people, but he's really evil and he's trying to deceive the, Rep the Democrat Party, which the Democrat Party already thinks he's a MAGA conservative. Um, just watch him supposedly mild mannered, but anti-abortion, anti-LGBT, anti-climate change. He's the he's a big thinker of fossil fuel money, big taker of fossil fuel. Oh, that makes him evil because he does not believe climate change is correct, and he does he believes that man and um, marriage between a man and a woman, and that you should not kill a baby inside the mother's womb. That makes him evil. Look, and this coming from a woman that believes that you can butcher a, a, a baby in the mother's womb. This is a woman that believes you probably have 355 genders and counting. There's also a woman that believes that if we, if we get rid of all gas vehicles and we get rid of everything, that was in early in the segment. It's not in the transcript right here, but uh, later, in the, uh, later in that segment, they made that day. Oh, yeah, 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 Republican, they're not trying to save the planet. Save the planet from what? This this planet, in my belief, has been here from six to 10,000 years. Evolution believes it's been 4.5 billion years. Let's hold that thought. Because if you believe the planet's been here for 4.5 billion years and the and the, the planet adjusts to climates and stuff, why the world didn't burn up? Well, you got to realize we finally started using gas. They've been using gas and coal for the last... Last 100 years. The planet didn't blow up yet. Yeah, but the carbon emission. The carbon emission, this is not, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. But if my memory serves me correct, the carbon emission has, this isn't the highest the carbon emission has ever been on this planet. But because somebody believes that climate change is not real. And they believe that fossil fuel is the answer. We're evil. And she added, then this is this is more of her nonsense. By the way, the herbus of this of those Republicans to go against the will of American people. The American people are all in for women's rights. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm all for women's rights. But I'm not for abortion. See, that's a see, see, jaw, see how she shaped this, ladies and gentlemen? Oh, most of Americans are for women's rights. I do not disagree with her in that statement. But abortion, however, the country split is a 50-50, if I'm not mistaken. Probably more. The last time we had the election and everything, more people went vote for the abortions. I understand that. There's some people on the fence. It might even be over. But ladies and gentlemen, a lot of people do not believe in abortions. Um, she also made the point, um, gay rights. Listen, the same thing. Hey, if you're a lesbian or you're a home, you, well, if you're, if you're, uh, if you partake in same sex relationships, you have the same rights as an American citizen. Now, some of my friends that are Christian might be holding their chest and the way I we talk. No, they have rights as American citizen. They can hunt, they can fish, they can have free speech. They have all that. They can voice their opinion. What bothers me, however, is when this group of people in same-sex relations say we are a, we are one particular race of people and we have more rights than you that i have an issue with 
um climate change things happening to fix the environment so we don't all die on this planet or drown on this planet so 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 it, so we stop selling gas vehicles and stop having hot water tanks and we while the politicians still have it is going to save the country um they are they, they have i call the herbers because they are not listening to the american people next year you're going to we're going to fix you well that sounds like a threat ladies and gentlemen i just read a statement who looks unhinged who looks like they're they don't know what they're talking about my my view is the view don't know what they're talking about Ladies and gentlemen, these pe the, the, these women that sit on this show believe that Republicans are evil because of certain points of view. Now, if I would come on this show, and I, I don't know if this is going to get viral. Hopefully, if it does, please share. But if this will go viral and the view would pick this up, they would call me. Huh, he's a fan. If he called his race, his homophobic bigots, he called it. I would be crucified because I went ahead and voiced my opinion. Ladies and gentlemen. There is people with evil intentions in their hearts. I'm not going to deny that. The Bible says that the heart is deceitfully wicked. Who can know it? The Bible says. But ladies and gentlemen, Republicans are not evil. Republicans are not stupid. They, they, these are some of the smartest people in the world. Same thing with the Democrat side. A lot of these Democrats, they have bad views, but they're very smart people. Okay? But ladies and gentlemen, for, for, for women... For these women to go on the screen, especially Joy Joy Behar and Goofy Whoopi, say, "Oh, well, all these evil. They look. They're, they're evil. They're stupid. They're." That is demeaning people's character. And ladies and gentlemen, that bothers me. That bothers me when a host goes behind a microphone or goes in front of a camera and says that the Republicans are stupid, all because they have a different point of view than the other people. And ladies and gentlemen, th th this is this needs to stop. This needs to stop. This is what this is why our country is divided today. Instead of politicians or people being real journalists and saying, "Listen, let's find a common ground." No, they want to highlight what divides us, and that keeps us divided. And ladies and gentlemen, it needs to stop. With that being said, we're gonna go ahead and take our break. We'll be right back in a few moments, so please stay tuned. How you doing everyone? Isaac Hayes here. I'm here to talk to you about Smith Truck and Equipment Sales. I've been part of the trucking industry for a few years now, and I know the importance of finding a company that won't just sell you a truck or a piece of equipment, but will take the time to know you and help you through the process and checking in on you after the sale. That's why we are proud to announce our partnership with Smith Truck and Equipment Sales. Smith Truck and Equipment Sales is a family-owned and operated pre-owned truck and trailer dealership in Lafayette, Louisiana, who have been serving Acadiana for over 40 years. They offer full service, parts and accessories, and financing. They also buy used trucks of all makes and models. You can visit Monday through Friday from 7.30 to 5 at their location at 3010 North East Evangeline Thruway. Or visit their website, smithtrucksales.com. You can also give them a call at 337-234-0557. And let their friendly and experienced staff take care of all your truck and trailer needs. Smith Truck and Equipment Sales. Tell them the Cajun Conservatives sent you. Cleansed and made us whole. Not one soul. All right, everybody, welcome back to the second segment of the Cajun Conservative Show. So, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> you remember before Kevin McCarthy uh, was ousted out by Matt Gates? You remember that there was a critical vote on the Senate, on the House floor, to extend our, our current spending situation until November, whatever. Uh, so we wouldn't default on our debt and we would not have a government shutdown. And it came up to a vote. Well, those are, there was a representative that pulled the fire alarm. Now we talked about this, you know, this was a common theme, uh, for kids when they wanted to get out of doing a test or something, they would pull the alarm. And this guy used to be a, a principal. So he put that tactic into, into the representative spot and pulled the alarm. And ladies and gentlemen, it was uh, it cost a lot of chaos. A lot of these 
uh, representatives had to leave the White uh, leave the Capitol, and they, you know, and it, and it delayed the vote. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we got some justice. Not, now I wasn't major. Like, if I would pull a firearm in the Capitol, I would probably get five years in prison. And if they find out I was a conservative, they would push for life. But this representative, Mr. Jamal Bowman, pleaded guilty to pulling the fire alarm in the Capitol building. That's right. Uh, last Thursday, uh, Bowman pleaded guilty to a misdemeanor charge relating to pulling a, fa- uh, pulling a false fire alarm in the Capitol building, the Hill report. District of Columbia Attorney General Brian Stoward charged Bowman with violation of the D.C. Code for pulling a fire alarm inside the Cannon Bill House office building during a September 30th House vote on a GOP funding package. The House scrambled to vote on the funding package to keep the government open as the 2023 fiscal years came to an end. Uh, let's see. The squad member is required to send an apology letter to the U.S. Capitol Police. The Hill reported and may be facing six months in jail with a $1,000 fine, according to Fox News, Chad per- Pringman. Now, he's not going to spend a year in jail. Ladies and gentlemen, they're going to they're gonna give him something to uh, they're going to they're going to make a deal to or the judge is going to put him on a community uh, um, community service where somebody else is going to file in for his community service and write a letter. That thousand dollars is chunk change to a politician, uh, ladies and gentlemen, but some justice have that has, has happened. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you should have heard this man as he talked about why he believed Now, Bowman said he believed pulling the fire alarm would automatically open the door and allow him to enter the house floor on time for the vote. He denied he pulled the alarm to disrupt the floor vote. Ladies and gentlemen, he said he couldn't get through the door. This is a, Wow. This is a representative that has access to the House floor chambers. Why does he need to pull a... Okay. This is a lame excuse in my opinion. Uh, Look, I don't know if you, the audience, have have seen a a fire alarm. but I believe you have. Probably 99.9% of my audience seen a fire alarm. And it's a nice little red box with a white handle or sometimes a red handle, depending on where you're at. And it says fire alarm why this guy would look at the door and there's videos he didn't even try to go outside he pulled the alarm i need to get there for the vote he was already inside he walked to the alarm and pulled it and look ladies and gentlemen like i said i'm look his statement today i was rushing to make a vote i came to a door that is usually open for votes but today would not open bowman said in a statement september 30th i am embarrassed to admit that i advanced uh Advocate, uh, activated the fire alarm, mistakenly thinking it would open the door. I regret this and sincerely apologize for any confusion that caused, but I want to be very clear that this was not me in any way trying to delay the vote, really. Actions speak loud and words, especially in that, this dude saying this, there's a, vid, there's a video of him walking right to the alarm and pulling it. Ladies and gentlemen, he wanted to stop the Republican Party from making that vote. Okay, because and look, I don't know. And look, like, like the speaker situation and stuff, that did make the Republicans look bad. But and look, look, Matt Gates really blew the bubble because Republicans passed that bill, and with the Democrats' help, to 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 go ahead and keep the government. That made it look good. That that was looking good. Now Bowman and others don't like the Republican Party working with some Democrats. If it's on, you know, simple-minded legislation. And it's good for America. Hey, you all work together and you'll vote for it. If, it. if it benefits America, but there's some on the right and even some on the left that say, no, we don't want to work together. We really want the vision and we don't want to get nothing done. And I, my personal opinion is that this is what he did. He didn't want this. He didn't want this to look good on the Republican Party. And he tried to delay the vote. Now, like I said, after this, Matt Gaze pulled his stunt, removed Kevin McCarthy. Look, we have uh, Mike Johnson. Mike Johnson is a way more better conservative than Kevin McCarthy. I will give Mike Johnson that. So, ladies and gentlemen, we just have to see. But it, this man, and look, look I, I hate to say this about politicians. I know a lot of politicians. And I hope I'm wrong about the ones I know. But politicians lie, ladies and gentlemen. It just, especially the D.C., politicians right or left hey the line like line is in their dna and ladies and gentlemen it is clear that this man did something wrong he's writing an apology letter oh but i didn't mean to i thought the doors would open you were walking towards outside the vote was behind you ladies and gentlemen i just i don't understand 
some of these politicians right here. And, and look, look, there's some people, he was just trying to go outside. They, they're going to try to justify what he did, but he did, he did plead guilty. So he is, he is admitting his guilt to pulling the alarm. So we got to give him that. He admitted that he pulled the alarm. All right. Um, unfortunately, again, as I said in the first segment, we had another mass shooting here in, uh, in here in the United States of America. And before I get into the politics of this, ladies and gentlemen, it is a tragedy. And I understand that there's going to be some people that put politics before people's lives. But I always do this before I talk about a mass shooting. Pray for the families. I'm going to say it again. It is very important that I say this. I know I mentioned it in the first segment, but I'm going to mention it again here. Ladies and gentlemen, this was somebody's brother, sister, mom, dad, son, daughter, aunt, uncle. Um, you can put any name in that. Um, somebody lost their lives. There was... I think uh, the count, let me go see if I can find the count. Uh, they, they, had, they had 18 victims that, that, were, that, that passed on. And uh, several more was injured, unfortunately. And that was the last count. I don't know if somebody else passed away due to this shooting. But um, 18 souls went into eternity, heaven or hell, whatever one. And that really breaks my heart. I hope, this one bro- I hope all these people were brothers and sisters in the faith and they got to heaven. Um, but ladies and gentlemen, this is a sad situation. Um, this, this person was mentally unstable weeks before the shooting. He went ahead and made statements that he was going to, um, hurt people. He was, he was well-trained in military, uh, in, uh, weapons, uh, because he was in the military at one time. He was in the reserves. Uh, he talked about, uh, I got one article where he talked about how, he uh he wanted to shoot up the National Guard base where he was stationed at. Now we don't know what led to these uh circumstances, but the, the main issue why this person did this problem, uh did this shooting was because of mental health. He had something wrong inside of him. His 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 he did not have all his ducks in a row. He didn't you know he he didn't he didn't go ahead and think straight. We can lay, label everything. Ladies and gentlemen, this man was mentally unstable. This man was sick. And we, you know, we, we have, you know, we have the report that came out. I think it was two days ago. Uh, well, it was on Saturday night, uh, Saturday, no Friday night, um, that he, he killed himself. Unfortunately, he removed himself, uh, from this earth and ladies and gentlemen, that is sad as well. Okay. And I know a lot of people that might be listening, but hold on. He just heard a number of people. How can you say that is very sad as well? Because ladies and gentlemen, this man was in the current state he was in, he possibly didn't know the Lord. And this ladies, that was another life that was lost. So out of this whole event, 19 people for sure have lost their lives. And ladies and gentlemen, this man needed help. And this is where, this is the argument of the conservatives right now that look, we need to do more about mental health because ladies and gentlemen, there was signs there that this man wanted to hurt people and hurt himself. Um, there was people that con- that came on record say, look, he was saying a couple of things and we were like, dude, um, if he would have been, you know, in a way to where they would have meant to, they would have tested him probably wouldn't have been able to own a firearm, ladies and gentlemen. And look, him being in the military PDST or whatever they call the PDS. or I can't remember the abbreviation right now, but ladies and gentlemen, it, 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 it puts a toll on a soldier. To see what they they've done they've done. Look look at the look at the Israel um look at the Israel fighters a while back. We reported they said, look, we've seen things we'll never erase. Ladies and gentlemen, post traumatic stress. That's what PDS uh, PDD or I, I can't. Anyway, um, ladies and gentlemen, that that's images that that live for you, live with you all your life. It's not it's not just and look. I haven't had it. Look, I, I, look, I love my country, but I never felt to go join the military. I just. I know, you know, uh, look, I, I support our men and women. I see police officers. I see soldiers and I shake their hands. Thank you for providing me the freedom that I could do what I'm doing right now. Now, if a draft would happen, you know, I, I would have to go. And that means my country needs me. But ladies and gentlemen, I just, the, the, the mental health argument is legitimate. Why am I bringing all this up? Because ladies and gentlemen, after this shooting, and this happened on Wednesday night, I recorded on Wednesday night. My phone was blown up, but inside the middle of a recording, I had the show plan, and it, it, I didn't know all the details. Now I know a lot more details, ladies and gentlemen. 
Um, but th this this man, you know, had problems. And guess what the left did? They didn't talk about the mental illness. They didn't talk about his struggles as a human being. They didn't. They didn't want to talk about none of that. Be why? Because that would take away blame from the gun. Think, think about this, ladies. And gentlemen. Think about this. The, their argument for red flag laws and stuff for hate speech and 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 all this stuff, they don't want to look at the mental illness side of it why because ladies and gentlemen like i said it takes away from the gun argument and what do i mean by that well if you blame mental illness that means it was the person deciding to take that weapon of his choice and hurt people it, it, but see, if, if you go ahead and move, remove that, this person shouldn't have had a gun because of that. That's that gun that's evil. See, if he only had one round in that firearm or if he, he couldn't get a, a AR-15, which they think it means for uh, um, instead automatic weapon, which it isn't. AR does not mean automatic weapon. Ladies and gentlemen, they, 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 they want to blame the gun so much. And look, they, they went on the attack. Oh, we need to go ahead and put gun laws in place. We need to take guns away from the American, the law by an American citizen, not the criminal. Because I'm going to bring this argument. And look, I'm probably going to I'm probably gonna talk about this way into the future. Not this story, but they, unfortunately, there probably will be some mass shootings in the future. I would hope not. But and I'm going to have to come back and defend the Second Amendment and defend gun ownership. And, and you, you, you heard me already, ladies and gentlemen, it's not the gun. It is the person behind the gun. But according to the left, we need to get guns off the street because if we take off guns, that means people will not be able to use them to murder people. But what about England? And, and we're going to use that example right now. Wait, what about England? You know, England is, they pretty much don't have guns on the streets, but there's still violence with knives now they're trying to pass laws on knives well if we get rid of the knife then we're going to be fine ladies and gentlemen kane used a rock you think about it okay kane killed his abel or kane killed his brother abel with a rock or it might not even been a rock we don't know it just the bible says he smote his brother i'm speaking king james um but the bible says he 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 he, he removed his brother from this earth now, we don't know what it was, but ladies and gentlemen, Kane didn't have a rock. I mean, Kane not a rock. Oh, Lord. Uh, Kane didn't have a gun. We don't know if he had a knife. We don't know what he used. But he, 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 he brought harm to his brother. And we don't know what he, but if you have murder in your heart, or if you have, if you have the intention to hurt somebody, it don't matter what it is. They're going to hurt you. If they got to use their bare hands, they will. Ladies and gentlemen, a gun is a is a tool that you can use for bad or good, but not according to the left. The left says, well, we got to get rid of guns. Now, there is some politicians out there like Ron DeSantis and others that are saying, no, we don't need to get rid of guns. We need to keep promoting gun safety and we need to start promoting guns for protection. Ladies and gentlemen, and I'm going to go back to that. A lot of people, you, you're probably tired of me saying this, but I think it needs to be said. The Second Amendment was not for us to go hunting on Saturday morning. Right now is in hunting season. I have not got a chance to go hunt yet. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm planning on it. Um, But and as much as I love hunting, the Second Amendment was not meant for me to go hunt. The Second Amendment was there to protect myself because the Founding Fathers believe that as American citizens, we had the right under God to protect ourselves. That's why the Second Amendment is there. That is from a tyrannical government. That is from somebody trying to break into your home. You have the right to defend yourself. Like I said, and look, I'm glad some politicians are standing up like Ron DeSantis and others. Now, I have this article here by Town Hall, and it says this, that CNN uses misleading data to push gun control after mass shooting. Another mass shooting means another opportunity for Democrats to push their radical gun control agenda in which they claim that it is the gun that kills people. On Wednesday, after the mass shooting in Law, uh, Lewistown, Maine, CNN highlighted misleading data that killed at least uh, data that killed uh, that killed at least 22 people. 
Left wing outlets claim that there will have been 525 mass shootings in 2023, adding that the main shooting co co uh, contribute to the list of 565 reported across the United States this year, giving to the gun violent RK, uh, violence archives. However, as pointed out by Breitbart News data from the gun violent archives is conducted by changing the definition of a mass shooting. Therefore, shooting caused by drive-by incidents, double or triple homicides, gang violence, and other radical claims are counted as mass shooting, leading to the spike in data. See, CNN didn't tell you that. Now, look, I'm going to clarify this a little bit. Right now, a definition of a mass shooting is getting shot, shooting at three people. Okay, think about this, all right? not not removing people from earth three people it's the mass shooting of shooting at three people that is in the data ladies and gentlemen that you can count thousands of incidents where people got shot at and they call that a mass shooting it also mass shooting not mass killing see the difference and this is what oh look we had five five hundred and sixty five reported uh, mass shootings in America just in 2023 alone. Yeah, if you could, if you corrupt the data, ladies and gentlemen, I could say I'm the richest man in the world, and you come talk to me. Hey, you're the richest man in the world. That's right. I got a hundred pennies. Whoa, well, yeah, that's not rich. That's a dollar. Yeah, but I got to have a hundred pennies. I believe that's a hundred million dollars. If if get what I'm and I know that's a bad analogy, but I'm just saying I could say, hey, I'm rich. I can use any dollar amount and I'm rich and you might well, that's that data's wrong. But you see CNN gives you the bad data and leaves it at that. They don't correct themselves. And ladies and gentlemen, that is to push their gun control narrative and go with that point. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not about gun control. It's about control. Ladies and gentlemen, the government uses stories like what happened in Maine to, and I'm talking about the Democrat side, not the right, but and I don't know, maybe some of the right, because look what the last bill they did after a shooting. And you had, I think, like 20 Republican senators go ahead and join in with the Democrat Party. But, you know, um, with that, you know, it just, it's about control. They, the government wants to control you. And it's hard, you know, because I hear a lot of people on the left, oh, you yeah, talk about stopping a tyrannical government. What if the government comes with a tank? What if a government comes with a jet? What if a car? Okay, you're right. They, they can come with all that. But let the IRS walk through, not the IRS, not, that's a bad analogy. Let, um, let a government agency say, hey, you know, we're going to go in and we're going to take everything you got. And it's wrong and you, you want to defend yourself. See, the government, the government wants to take guns away because they don't know what's behind that door. And this is why the founding fathers put in the second amendment. I'm not promoting violence. I'm not promoting anything. Please, that's that's my. I'm just. I'm. I'm. That's why the Constitution has the second amendment. And ladies and gentlemen, it's to stop a tyrannical government. And look, look, look. Prime example. Why you think in Mexico the cartel goes through doors, and takes everything? Unfortunately, some Mexicans have. Because there's no resistance. And I heard him. I, I told this story before, and I'm gonna say it again, probably in the future. I have a friend that's a, a missionary in Mexico, and he said that, you know, they don't get me wrong. The cartels here in America, but at the same time, they're not as strong. Why? Because when they knock down a door, they don't know what's behind that door. And ladies and gentlemen, look, uh, look, like I said, another mass shooting is bad. It is, it, you know, the guy died. He removed himself from this earth. And ladies and people lost their lives, unfortunately. But ladies and gentlemen, this does not prove that guns are the problem. It's the people behind the gun. That is the problem. And like I said, look, look, this man had mental issues. Now, now you can ask a question. What about red flag laws, Isaac? What about this? What about that? Well, we can have that conversation. I'll gladly sit with anybody and have that conversation. But ladies and gentlemen, um, red flag laws are bad because... Oh, you're a Christian? Well, you're crazy. Or look, let's go to the definition of the view from the last segment. If you're a Republican, you're evil, and you're stupid, you shouldn't get a gun. Think about it. Who's going to write the rules for these red flag laws? That's the issue I have with red flag laws. And ladies and gentlemen, I look, my heart goes out to the families again. Uh, but no, gun control laws, are they're not the answer. But that's what the left wants you 
the audience the thing. If we get rid of guns, we're going to have utopia on this earth. And that's not so. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and take a break. We'll be right back in a few moments, so please stay tuned. How you doing, everyone? Isaac here, and I'm here to tell you about a great company called Give a Derm. There's a lot of skincare products out in the market today, but none like Give a Derm. Give a Derm is a great American Christian conservative company that prides itself in making skincare products that will help your skin to stay healthy. Not like other skincare products that have toxins and chemicals that can hurt your skin. Do you know what goes on your skin is in your bloodstream in 30 seconds? So you want to be careful what you put on your body. That's why Give a Derm products are made with all natural ingredients to keep your skin healthy. My family has used Give a Derm products and we love it because it works. If you would like to try Give a Derm and experience this great American made product, go into the description of this episode. There you will find a link to Give a Derm and see what they have to offer you. At checkout, use the promo code BGSMedia10 to get 10% off your product. Thanks, guys. You're my peace of mind. When this old world seems to get me down. How you doing, everybody? Welcome back to the third and final segment of the Cajun Conservative Show today. Ladies and gentlemen, people in Chicago are mad. That's right. I'm not the only one that gets mad behind this microphone. Angry Isaac sometimes represents angry America. You know, somebody that that works hard and just wants to live a simple life, but the government or some people want to take away the freedoms of those hardworking Americans or wants, or they want to put the rights of non-citizens in front of citizens. What I'm talking about? Well, Chicago had a, the Chicago, I guess, town, uh, had a council meeting and, um, Chicago, let me, let me just read the headline from Fox News. Chicago meeting turns ugly as residents protest plan, excuse me, migrant camp in local neighborhood. Nobody access cries the citizens of Chicago. So what's going on here? Well, in Chicago, they, they have been, they, you know, they were one of these people that said, we're a sanctuary city. All you migrants come, come. We're going to, we're going to welcome you with open arms come now granted they're thousands of miles away from the border and you know texas florida um new mexico and california well not california because they haven't done it but um a lot of southern states were taking in these refugees or not refugees these illegal immigrants and they was like look they're overrunning our state what are we gonna do greg abbott ron DeSantis, and a few other governors said hmm you know chicago said they'll take them. New York said they'll take them. Los Angeles, they said they'll take them. We will pay the bus fare to send them up there. But when we get them there, we're going to drop them off and let y'all deal with them. And ladies and gentlemen, this has been an issue for these big cities to a point where uh, Mayor Adams of New York and, you know, Kathy Halchin, I guess that's how you say a name. I'm, I'm not making fun. Um, they don't send them no more. Please don't send them no more. Oh, please don't send these different tones when the problem is in your backyard. When the problem is far away, it's, you know, hey, and look, like everything in life, you know how many people go ahead and like, oh, look at that problem. Boy, they should do this. They should do that. But when the problem comes on your front door, you're like, oh, my goodness, what I'm going to do? Please take it away. Going back to this, though, but uh, so so what Chicago thought would be the wisest idea was to take a vacant lot about uh, about 10 acres that's what the, the article says and put all these migrants in there now i don't know if they were going to build them houses or whatever but it, it was going to set up a camp or some type of place for these migrants to stay in the city of chicago now this is a chicago run facility so chicago's taxpayers would have to pay for this and ladies and gentlemen people were not happy. I seen the pictures. They had a lot of people that were at this meeting and they were like, no, there, there's, there's some parents that are saying they're worried about their kids walking back and forth to school. This is it. This is not in the city. I don't believe this is in a neighborhood. Um, some people were worried about their safety 
And you got to remember Chicago, going back to our last segment, Chicago is one of the most tight lit sec anti second amendment cities. And it's so hard for a citizen to get a gun unless you're a multi millionaire. Um, but ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot of people that are against this. Now the city of Chicago, um, they've been doing this for a while and there's some that are saying, Hey, we just heard about it now. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is the ironic thing about this, all right? Illegal immigrants, migrants, they come across the Southern border and the Northern border because there's some that's passing there now. Come to this country and a whole city says, you know what? We're going to build a little small community for you to live in. Probably give you lights, give you water, give you probably free cell phone, give, give you everything you want. Probably food stamps, everything. But an American veteran that is down on his luck living on the side of the streets can't even get medical attention properly. Think about this. A man that's a citizen or a woman, because there is women that serve in the military, men or women, that serve in our military or living on the streets and don't know where they're going to get their next meal. And you have people that came across the border. And they might've been looking for a better life. We don't know the whole reason. There is other reasons for coming to America, but possibly to hurt, or hurt us as well. They're getting homes. They're getting a whole, they're getting government assistance. While our own U S former forces are sitting in the streets. It's sad. It's sad that we had, and look, 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 this, look, look, you know, that the, the, the last mayor, I can't think of her name right now was worse than this mayor, but he don't look like he's doing a good job either in Chicago. And ladies and gentlemen, this, this is, this is crazy that we have a country right now and narrow down a city would rather take care of illegal immigrants more than they take care of their U S veterans. People that fought to give us freedoms. It's sad, ladies and gentlemen. It's sad. Um, one other note before I continue to the story. Um, I don't know a lot of people watch Friends. I've watched Friends in the past. It's all right series. I, I like some. Some stuff are funny. Um, iconic role, and this person was involved with it, was um, the couch scene. If you remember on Friends, they're going up the, uh, the stairs with the couch uh, for one of the ladies. I can't think of her name. Uh, but, um, uh, Matthew Perry who, was pl who played, uh, I think, uh, Chandler in the show. Yeah. Chandler, uh, was found in his home, unfortunately. And, uh, he has passed away and ladies and gentlemen, I, I don't usually talk about stuff like this, but, um, he was an iconic uh, actor, uh, had a lot of problems with drugs and alcohol. And on one of his interviews, he said, you know, Unfortunately, I, uh, I well, you know, fortunately I've done all this, but I've been sober for at least a year. Now the, the autopsy came back. They're still waiting on some tests and we're probably going to hear, but unfortunately a life was taken and a uh, very young age. I think he was 56. Uh, just, just one, one thing he did say he wanted people to remember by and, and not to remember him as Chandler on friends. He wanted to be that person that was remembered for helping people. And ladies and gentlemen, we should honor Mr. Perry's wishes and do that. Remember him for the good he done. Now, I hope he met the Lord and, um, I hope his fate was not, um, not, not in anything wrong, but you know, unfortunately our life has taken and you know, that's some sad news to hear. And, uh, like I said, uh, the first, I believe of the friends cast to no, 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 no. He's the second because the, uh, the coffee manager. I, uh, Guthrie, I think his name was, he passed away a few years ago. So, uh, out of the French cast and yes, friends is an iconic series and it is getting in there into the classic stage. Um, you know, like Andy Griffith and stuff like that, that's real classics and, uh, friends, friends was filmed. If I'm not mistaken, 1990 to 2001, they went 11 series seasons. So it was, it was filmed in the nineties into the two thousands, early two thousands, same thing with Baywatch. Uh, you know, a lot of people look at Baywatch and like, oh, that's an old movie. Well, they filmed into the two thousands. So, um, uh, useless movie trivia right there, but keep Mr. Perry's family in your prayers. All right. So Huffington, Huffington post, Huffington, Huffington post, you know, 
they, they, they're, they're a liberal paper. They huff and puff. Uh, but the Huffington Post had an op-ed. And I, I, ha I was going to probably bring out these stories um, that I'm going to tie this into. But when this really was the bowl on top of the gift because it, it's funny. And we've been talking about how the media is slowly shifting the blame to Israel. We have seen it for the last. Remember when Israel first, when Israel was first attacked, the media, the politicians, we stand with Israel. Israel has a right to defend herself. Israel needs to go and take out Hamas. Now that Israel is in the process of doing that, you have the media, some in the media, and some on liberal college campuses saying Israel should just hold back. Israel shouldn't send rockets into Gaza because. Uh, Evidently, it was not everybody in Gaza. See, Hamas it, home bases in Gaza, but it wasn't everybody in Gaza, which we disproved on this show multiple times that some Palestinians in the Gaza Strip were praising the uh, the, the terrorist attack in Israel, where these these butchers went in there and killed unto a, a few thousand people. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, this story right here really, really ties that in. The Huffington Post op-ed compares Israel to Nazi Germany and Gazians to the Holocaust victims in despicable display of ignorance. This is coming from the Daily Caller. The left-wing Huffington Post has apparently managed to travelize the Holocaust so that it could run cover for misguided affiliates for Hamas terrorists. Uh, as soon as the, as the readers opened the Spanish Huffington Post article, they are met with an image likening Nazis to Israel and Holocaust victims to Gaza. The same people who want other Holocaust, other Holocaust again, who went against Holocaust against the Jews. Ladies and gentlemen, what a slap in the Jewish people's face. To compare them to the people that murdered 6 million of them in the 40s. Ladies and gentlemen, we fought a whole war against the Nazis. And it was hidden for most of the war until America got into Germany and realized what Hitler was doing to the Jews. Now, the Huffington Post is going to go ahead and say, well, the Israel is oppressing the Gaza people. No, they're not. Hitler did not give a warning to the Jewish people to run. Now, Hitler did tell the people, uh, did, did tell other countries, look, if you want these Jewish people, I will pay for them to go over there. And a lot of people don't know this about Franklin D. Roosevelt, but Franklin Roosevelt turned them around. Oh, we don't want them Jewish people here. And many other countries didn't want them here. And that led to Hitler making concentration camps. And ladies and gentlemen, it was horrible. But to my knowledge, you didn't hear Adolf Hitler tell the Jewish people, hey, you need to move. The Jewish people told the Gaza people, hey, get out. If you want your family to live, go to Egypt. We're not attacking Egypt. Ladies and gentlemen, how can this person compare the Jewish, the, 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 the Israel to the Nazi party? This person, I promise you, does not have a great education on World War II. What happened in World War II was disgusting, and to compare the Jewish people to Nazis is an insult to the Jewish people in Israel. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and talk about it, because I'm going to disprove. Now, this writer of this Huffington Post uh, article probably will not listen to this show. If they do, get educated, buddy or lady, whoever you are. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to, I'm going to show you how this reader is wrong. So we can start from the beginning when on a Saturday morning, we got news articles all across our cell phones and it was breaking news all over the world that the Hamas terrorists broke through the, the border fence in Israel. But before that, they sent rockets to distract the armed forces. And they went and butchered families across the border. I told of a story, and I'm going to say it again because I think it means importance. There was a family that moved right to the Gaza border. 
to show the Gaza people, hey, we want peace. As Jeru as Israel as Jewish people, we want peace. And Hamas terrorists took them out. The whole family. Um, does that that does that ring a bell in history? Yeah. Hitler. Hitler took the uh, the German people and went ahead and slaughtered six million Jews. They called them dogs. All because they were Jewish people. And this is what Hamas did. Hamas thinks that the Jewish people don't are not of the right faith. They're not of the right culture. They're 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 not of the right race. And guess what? They won't kill them. That sounds more like a Nazi a uh, Nazi personality than the Jewish people trying to protect themselves. Also, let's go ahead and look at some recent stories of how the Jewish people are victims to Hamas, even across the world. New York City College Jewish students seen locked inside of a library as anti-Israel protests moves through the building. This wasn't a protest. This was a, a lynch mob. So what happened was they had this, this group of students that were protesting Israel, found out there was Jewish students in the library and tried to break down the door to get to the Jewish kids all because they were Jewish and they believe that Hamas is right. And that the Jewish people are, 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 are being terror. They, they're being, they're, they're being, you know, uh, the, the control. They're trying to control the gods of people and they're being tyrants and they're, um, who was the tyrants in this, in this story? I seen the video. You had students banging on a library door. The librarian had to lock the door to protect these students. Ladies and gentlemen, it is, um, does, well, does that sound like the Jewish people were being not being like the Nazis? Where you have people that are pro-Palestinian. I'm not even going to... I'm going to make a remark right here. They're not even pro-Palestinian. They're pro-Hamas. I'm think, thinking about... Think about this. There's people in this country that sympathize with terrorists more than our own allies. People that butcher families. They're more sympathetic to those people than the people that are trying to protect themselves so they don't get hurt again. Isaac, that's one story. Hold, hold on, I got another one. Pro-Palestinian riot to storm Russian airport, flood runaway, flood runway, looking for Israel flight, official, official says. This is an old part. I'm gonna go back to the American media, how the American media are trying to point Israel as the the, the, the terrorizer, not the victim in this uh, circumstance. Uh, the Associated Press uh, refers to anti-Semitic storming airport threatening to kill Jews as a protest. Now, this is in Russia, by the way. I'm just saying. But, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I thought, according to the Huffington Post, that the Jewish people were acting like the Nazis and the gods of people and the Palestinians are the victims in all this mess. No, ladies and gentlemen, we have, we have been talking about this for a couple of weeks now. And every story I have come out with has shown that the Jewish people are the victims. My, my whole last episode on the first segment, is, my, whole, my last episode is titled that Israel and the Jewish people are the victims, not Hamas. And ladies and gentlemen, this showing people storming a airport, not because they, they, they you know, they, they, they're, 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 they're trying to defend freedom. No, they're trying to get to the Jewish people that were on that plane. You have people in New York city that, that were, that were threatening the lives of people uh, of Jewish students in a library. You saw demonstrations. I, I, I talked about one the other day of Graham Allen showing kids walking in a public school and, and chanting praises for Hamas and destruction to Israel. But the nerve of the Huffington Post to come out and say that the Jewish people are acting like the Nazis. Ladies and gentlemen, this shows the ignorance 
of this nation or some in this nation. You have college students are praising Hamas. Now, are they, are they knowingly doing it? Uh, that you can argue. But ladies and gentlemen, it just shows how brainwashed these college kids are. And ladies and gentlemen, look, look I, I thought when you go to college, you're supposed to be smarter. You're getting educated. You're, you're supposed to enlighten yourself. This, this, this war has shown me that we should close every stinking college down for at least one year. Now they're not going to do that. There's millions of dollars being poured into these colleges on the state side, but I'm, I'm onto the point and look, I, I know and people might not agree with me, but or agree with him, but Matt Walsh made a good point. This is the point where we got to say, Hey, we got to stop defunding colleges where we should have been preaching that a long time ago. And I look, I'm at fault of that, but ladies and gentlemen, we have students protesting to protect a terrorist group. Ladies and gentlemen, and, and failed to mention uh, this, this person of this article is blame. It's it's tell, uh, or they're saying that the Jewish people are Nazis and they're acting like Nazis. They failed to mention in this report that eh, it was the Hamas terrorists that went into Jerusalem first and hit, did the first blow. And also they, they probably failed to mention in the article that these these poor Palestinians were dancing in the streets and saying destruction to Israel. Now they're crying. Oh, Israel's attacking us. Oh, Israel's blowing up their people. Oh, Israel's going in there and they started their ground invasion. I'm glad they did. They're going to take out a terrorist group. Now, ladies and gentlemen, on a side note, America is not out of the fight with this either. No. Iranian, the Iranian and Syrian forces shot that shot some of our, our bases or our drones, something like that. And I'm going to repeat what the president says. And I don't always agree with the president and the vice president, but I hope they really stick to their guns. They told Iran, don't do it. They told the Syria, don't do it. It's hard to believe them though, because Syria is still getting their oil. Iran is still getting their deals with America. But on a side note, that $6 billion that every liberal has said, well, they didn't use that to fund Hamas. It's still sitting in a bank account, not frozen. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope the president and the vice president mean what they say, but we're not out of the woods yet. All I will say this, and this is my God honest opinion. It's not fact. I believe it, it would happen if we had a president Trump right now. Hamas wouldn't be attacking Israel because Hamas would know that Donald Trump would tell Israel, Hey, we'll come and help y'all. And the force of an America of, of the, of the American military would have been behind Israel. Unfortunately, right now though, Israel's surrounded and their, their, their big, their big brother isn't there to help them right now, unfortunately, but oh, let's pray that the president does right. But this stupid idiot to write an article comparing Israel to the Nazis. He, he just, uh, he says, he's just dumb, he's stupid. He's ignorant. Now I, I just, I, I, I like the view. They willful, they, they, they stupid, ignorant people. That's all I got to say with that. All right. Thank you again for always listening to the Cajun conservative show. It is an honor and a privilege to always get a chance to visit with you. Uh, if you like to reach out to me, you can always reach out to me on Facebook, reach out to me on Twitter. Uh, well, X at the Cajun show. Uh, you can also follow me on true social at the Cajun conservative show. Also TikTok. Uh, TikTok is, uh, at the, uh, the Cajun conservative, uh, goes, I'm trying to put more videos out there. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, work is killing me right now, but that's okay. I'm pressing on. Um, with that being said, remember to like, and to subscribe to the show. If you're watching on YouTube, please hit the bell. It tells you every time we have a new episode out, also hit the like button and the share button on the audio platform and 
follow if you uh whatever one subscribe or follow on the audio platform go check out the website the cage conservative show that wordpress.com put all the new episodes out right there uh ladies and gentlemen that's gonna wrap it up for me tonight and i want to thank you as always i love you guys uh thank you for continue your continued support if this was your first episode thank you for joining the cage conservative family uh go check out uh give a derm go get, check out hair club go check out smith's truck and equipment sales um help us out go check out our merchandise source uh buy some merch from us and um you know help us out here help us to grow help us l l help continue to grow the cage conservative show ladies and gentlemen and uh my heart and my uh my thoughts are with all of you and i just i thank you from the bottom of my heart love you be blessed be encouraged remember jesus christ is king he's coming back he's coming back soon so don't be fate of heart jesus has overcome the world if you want to know jesus your lord and savior reach out to me on twitter facebook or on my email and i'll tell you how to make jesus your savior and heaven your home until next time be blessed you have a good one